Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. Thomas Park, the CEO and co-founder of Retium, and Michael Moll, CTO and co-founder of Retium. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having so, us. <laughs> so let's get into the interview. Could you give a brief introduction about yourselves and what Retium is? Right. So I'm going to start first. So I'm Michael Moll, CTO of Retium and co-founder. Uh, I came from Kenya, got a scholarship study uh, business and marketing in Canada. Quickly jumped into technology. I've been leaving developer teams for six years. Uh, three apps in the App Store. They've been used in over 22 countries. And I'm just going to introduce Retium. Retium is a real estate investment platform powered by blockchain that allows fractional ownership for anyone to invest in real estate and earn potential dividends for as little as a hundred dollar investment. No. Oh. So great. My name is Thomas Park. I am the CEO and uh, co-founder. Um, I've been a realtor for the past 14 years in Vancouver, sold over half a billion dollars worth of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, we own a Remax office, have a small team in downtown Vancouver, and uh, we're starting off in uh, Vancouver first, and yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Retium is a real estate uh, fractional ownership platform? Yes. Yeah, so Retium is a fractional ownership platform for real estate. What we allow people to do is easily as sign up with their ID card anywhere in the world, uh, load their money from anywhere in the world. We do AML and KYC, go through our mobile and web application, see residential to start uh, properties, go in with lose $100, invest. We then give them a digital share certificate, our property tokens, our security tokens that give them potential dividend income from the rental income as well as potential appreciation from the asset. So within your platform, how is blockchain technology embedded? So blockchain technology is actually used to have the ledger of all the all the properties are put on a private permissioned ledger, which we're using Hyperledger, uh, as well as all of the transactions are actually blockchain transactions, um, as well as the the actual tokens and share tickets themselves are stored on a ledger that then get traded. So we're using blockchain as a single point of truth and the and the shared ledger for all the transactions that happen. So you guys mentioned a little bit about how you guys decided to use Hyperledger technology. So what is Hyperledger and how and why did you decide to use it? Right, so we're actually using, that's a good question, we're using IBM's Hyperledger fabric and we decided for a few reasons. Uh, one, Hyperledger is a private permission blockchain, meaning all the users there are actually known users, meaning they have to have KYC, they have to have AML, but they also have to have a specific role. Are they an investor? Are they an appraiser? Are they a property manager, etc.? The next thing is confidential transactions. Um, we can control the confidentiality of all transactions and how much different parties can use. And as an enterprise solution, you know, our B2B customers, it's very, very important that they have that. The next thing is scalability. Hyperledger Fabric has 3,500 transactions per second. Bitcoin could do two, Ethereum could do 20. We saw in December, CryptoKitties crashed the Ethereum network. We don't want that to happen to us. So until sharding happens, we're using Hyperledger. The last thing is IBM is trusted by 44 of the top 50 banks uh, for their hosting as well as 90% of airlines and so we want the credibility of IBM backing us up and as well as their world-class enterprise security. So you guys mentioned about KYC and AML regulation, it's also a big issue here in Korea. So you guys have that all panned out using Hyperledger? Yes, yeah, so actually we have, a, we have a, a mix. So we're using Hyperledger to be able to customize that, but we actually have partners. So for KYC, we have a partner in Vancouver called iComply. They have over a thousand databases that they search when a, an ID comes in and within 20 seconds we know if it's real. We have another company called Blockchain Information Group that actually does AML for Bitcoin wallets mm -hmm. and uh, they are actually used by big security, uh, government security services all around the world. Um, and so that's our other partner. Our third partner is called Sendwire. They get money from anywhere in the world and send it to our account for 0.7% transaction and they also do AML on that. So we actually have an entire compliance vendor database. Those are the first three that we're using, but we'll, we'll keep growing that. So you guys have the regulation problem settled out. However, when it comes to real estate, ownership issues, taxes, maintenance, it's a big problem. So when you guys say fractional ownership, where does the ownership lie? Within the, who owns the property where you guys can, where you guys supply the real estate properties? Right, so what happens is we take a real estate property and we put that into a special purpose vehicle which is a limited liability company. The title of that property is then held by a trust company and then the shares of that special purpose vehicle, that company, are what are floated as security tokens onto our <coughs> real estate platform and exchange. You then buy into those tokens and when you hold those tokens you're actually holding equity in a real life world company that owns the property. And then so you have the right to the income that comes from that and you have a right to, to the appreciation that comes from that asset. So a third party 
company owns the property and then the fractional ownership goes to the users and the rental fees, rental payments that gets divided within the users the token holders, platform. The exactly. token holders. It, within each specific property, exactly. So I heard you guys are planning a sale. So how does your sale plan go? Um, in joint by for our token sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are actually uh, about to release our private sale and that's going to be happening next month. And uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, the month after that, so that's July, private sale. The pre-sale will be opening in August and then the ICO will be the end of September and October for the public sale. And we're very excited uh, for the progress that's being made on, on that side. So really looking forward to people tracking that, getting to our website and, and, and following along. Uh, on our channel, we actually had another platform who are, pl who are planning a real estate related platform. But what makes Retium different from other real estate related platforms? I think there are actually three things that make us different. One is compliance we have the compliant engine built right in. We're starting in the hardest markets in terms of compliance for tokens and security tokens, which is Canada, United States. Um, and so we have the rules around accredited investors, non-accredited investors, KYC built in, who can hold tokens, uh, tax planning built right into the platform. Um, and, then, and then the la next thing is Retium is built on Hyperledger Fabric, which is the private permission blockchain, so the scalability um, and the enterprise uh, security. And the last thing is, when we look at what our security tokens give, they give dividends, uh, but they also give appreciation and secondary trading. And when you look at all of our competitors, they may have dividends, but they don't have secondary trading and they don't have appreciation uh, within those tokens. And they haven't made a compliant security token that can stand up anywhere in the world. And I think that's where the industry is going. Yes, there may be a bit of leeway in the next few months to do different things, um, but a security token that is not an ERC-20 token that can be tracked and used compliantly is what we're going for within an ecosystem that's supported by IBM. And we think that's gonna give us an advantage. So equity-wise, equity you guys plan to launch a platform or do your uh, real estate uh, properties, do they, are they separated around the globe or are they kind of focused on Canada because you guys are based in Canada? So the properties for myself being a, a realtor in, for the past 14 years in Vancouver, 90% uh, of my clients are actually investors. Mm -hmm. So what I've done over the past 14 years is I've actually grown their asset. So what we're doing is that we're starting off with the properties first in Vancouver. We have our actual first property on the platform next month. Mm -hmm. And then basically because I'll vet those properties because I already understand the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Then we have actually a network of realtors that are high uh, uh, producing realtors all across North America that will actually vet the properties for us in those markets. So do you guys have any local developments here in Korea? Uh, not right at the moment, but uh, you know, we're open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, thank you guys so much for a great interview. Do you guys have any last comments for our audience? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, real estate investing, you know, historically, if you go back thousands of years, globally has been open to kings and royalty. And then in the last, you know, couple hundred years, you know, it's been open to the big banks, uh, you know, VCs. And in the last, you know, couple decades, you know, crowdfunding has something that's kicked off. And I think what blockchain gives the opportunity for is for global, transparent, compliant, and affordable uh, transactions and platforms. And we believe that this is going to enable anyone and everyone to be able to own a piece of real estate anywhere in the world for as little as $100. And that includes you. So check out our website, vtm.com. We're excited to serve you. Thank you very much for watching and we, our motto is we want to have uh, real estate for everyone. So thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Thomas Park, the CEO and co-founder of Retium and Mr. Michael Moult, the CTO and co-founder of Retium. Thank you for watching.